Hello everyone and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Rev. Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who is helping to lead worship today, we welcome you. We are so glad that you are here. If this is your first time to worship with us online, we are particularly pleased that you have chosen Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for worship. And I want to encourage you and everyone to fill out our contact form today. The link to that is pinned right in the comment section and there's a QR code right on the screen that'll help you access it. This is a wonderful way that we'll be able to connect with you, get to know you a little bit better. Um, you'll be able to put that all important email address there because that's a way that we can get the e-newsletter to you that has all of the information about the ways to connect and grow in faith and to serve and all of those wonderful things. And there's also a place there for you to put prayers that go straight, uh, those requests go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. So I encourage you to use that contact form today. When we gather for online worship, we do covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. When we covenant to participate, that means that, well, we're going to participate. This isn't just a random video that you've happened by today. This is worship of God and worship with one another. So we encourage you to turn off other devices and distractions, maybe light a candle to help you focus. And then when it's time to sing, sing. When it's time to pray, pray. Just go ahead and fully participate in what we're doing together. And then we covenant together to be a blessing and that means that all the ways that we are gathered today um, the way that we're in the comment section the way that you may be gathered with people right around you all of this worship that we're sending out into the world we want it all to be a blessing to everyone at all times we are especially excited today to welcome reverend margaret ann jessup as our preacher today we'll learn more about margaret ann soon and again we're really glad that you are here too welcome to worship Please join us in singing, Your Grace is Enough. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy and nothing can keep us apart so Oh 
salvation and all your people sing along so I'm Patty Ingram, and I'm a member of Douglas Avenue. And please join with me in the spirit of prayer as I offer our opening prayer. God of living waters, we come to you today seeking the refreshment that only you can bring. We confess that we often turn away from you and drink deeply in the waters of anxiety and fear. But we turn to you today knowing that you bring abundant life. Visit us with your presence, saturate us with your spirit, and bathe us in your streams of living water. Transform us into living testimonies of your love and power, that we may also offer your healing, healing love to everyone we meet. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning. My name is Janet Schmidt and I'm the organist at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. This is the time in our service when we share the peace of Christ. You may share it with me, with those who are watching, and with those who may be worshiping with you in your household. I will say peace be with you and your response is and also with you. Peace be with you. I'm Abby Jessup. And I'm Fred Jessup. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Linda Herod. Welcome to WIVL Sale. Hi, I'm Carol Heron. I'm her sidekick. <laughs> Peace, be, Peace with be with you. you. I'm Megan with Wouldn't It Be Lovely. And I'm Kayla with Wouldn't It Be Lovely. And Peace, Peace be, be with you. you. It's time for small talk. So I want to invite all of the children who are joined with us in online worship to come in really close to your device, to your screen, so that you can see and hear absolutely everything that goes on with small talk. The special time is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and of course, her special assistant, Laud the Lamb. So come in right now, really close, really close for small talk. Hi everybody, I am Miss Lori. This is Laud, the lamb. And we have a lot of containers here today. I'm gonna pan around here and show you. Mm-hmm, lots of containers. And one of these things, they all hold, can hold water, okay? Laud loves to eat goldfish. But I'll open it later, okay? Oh, okay, we'll open this later. Laud loves to eat goldfish. 
But the one thing that really bothers him about goldfish is he gets so thirsty because they're kind of salty, right? So he'll have to drink some water, right? Now, all of these cups hold water, right? All of them, from little cups to medium cups to really large cups to Cohen's sports bottle that he takes when he has practice or a game. They all hold water and they take care of our thirst for a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, water's the best thing to take care of your thirst. But will one drink of water last forever? No. There is something that's filling that does last forever. And that is Jesus. If you drink up all of Jesus's words and they're right inside of you, you're good to go. Now, do you still get thirsty? Yes, and need water. Yes. Jesus's water or message is totally different. But that message lasts forever. So make sure you drink your water today. Right? Okay. Bye. Mm. All right, more goldfish. Please join us in singing Fill My Cup, Lord. I'm Sue Landreeb, a member here at Douglas Avenue. Our reading from the Bible from, is from the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verses 1 through 15. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. Now, when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard, Jesus is making and baptizing more disciples than John, although it was not Jesus himself but his disciples who baptized, he left Judea and started back to Galilee, but he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman asked him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, 
and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible readings we have received today. Amen. Good morning. My name is Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, and I am the executive director and pastor of Wouldn't It Be Lovely, a ministry housed here at Douglas Avenue. It is an honor to bring to you the word of God today. When Pastor Meredith asked me to preach today, we decided that I would preach for you a similar sermon that I preached to other congregations when asked to preach on Wouldn't It Be Lovely. Some of what I say may be things that you already know or have already heard, but some of you are newer to Douglas Avenue, so I wanted to share some stories with you again. When I'm asked to preach about Wouldn't It Be Lovely, I always think of the beauty of the story of the woman at the well. Many of you know this text well. Before I review the Bible story, I want to tell you another story. In seminary, I did an internship at Thistle Farms in Nashville, Tennessee. It is a ministry for women that are recovering from prostitution, addiction, and poverty. Part of their recovery is becoming employed in their social enterprise, Thistle Farms, that make bath and body care products um, for the public to purchase. The woman would sell these products online and also at farmer's markets. I would go with them during my internships to the farmer's markets. I would help them set up their displays and help them sell their products. To my surprise, I became friends with these women many who had been in prison many times and had horrific life experience that I had no idea even existed. It didn't take long to realize that the women had lives that I could hardly even imagine. Some of their stories were hard to believe, but all of them had a thing in common, that they needed somebody to give them a chance and they wanted to love and to be loved. No different than all of us. One day at a farmer's market, myself and two other women in the program, who I had spent a great deal of time with at the, by this time, were setting up and selling their products that they had made. A gentleman came up to me and said, so how long have you been clean and off the streets? I immediately stepped back and I responded in an earshot of my new friends. I said, oh, not me. I'm not one of them. I am a seminary student. I am not one of them. When I heard my own words, my life changed. Please pray with me. Oh God, how grateful we are to be together for your word. Be with me, your servant, as I discuss the story of the woman at the well and how it can change all of our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Now I will retell the scripture from John and make a connection between my story and the woman at the well. First, here's a few general facts that I think um, are important to review. I think it's interesting that the recorded conversation between the woman at the well and Jesus is the longest conversation ever that Jesus had with anyone in all of the recorded Gospels. Longer than any of his disciples, he spoke with her longer than he did even his accusers that were about to kill him, longer than he talks to even his family. And she is the very first person that he revealed himself to as the Christ in the book of John. Listen to the story again. Jesus came to a town in Samaria called Sychar. It was about noon and Jesus was hot and tired. His disciples walked ahead of him to buy food, so Jesus was alone. A woman from Samaria came to get some water, 
Most believe that she came to the well around noon to avoid people that might have ridiculed her and shamed her. You see, other good women get their water in the early morning when it's cool. But she got her water when it was believed that all other people would not be out because it was so hot. But on this day, Jesus was out. When Jesus saw this woman, he said to her, Will you give me a drink? She must have been so taken aback. How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, a drink? She asked. Jews rejected Samaritans. They were one of them people. The woman at the well was a triple outsider, making her a real them. She was a Samaritan, which made her a half-breed, a full pagan, as far as the purest were concerned. She was also, of course, a woman. In Jesus' time, women were not given any voice and were not even allowed to worship with men. They had no place in public life, and they were not to be seen or heard. And third, she would have been called a fallen woman. As I said a moment ago, respectable women made their trips to the well in the morning when they could greet one another and chat together. It is believed that this was their social time. But she was one of them women, not included. They probably often talked about people like her. Many of us come to this text um, in John, the woman at the well, preconditioned to see the shame that the woman carried, as surely she carried that water jar. Despite what we have been taught, this text is not about shame. Instead, it invites us to consider what might happen if we engage one another as human beings created and beloved by God, inherently valuable and worthy of love and respect. Maybe she had five husbands and lived with one out of survival due to death, maybe infertility, or other unknown factors. We just don't know why. But we think that the truth with Jesus, it really just doesn't matter. Jesus didn't care why she had had five husbands and was living with another. Next of all things, Jesus tried to have a religious conversation with her. He said something to her about living water. He wanted to quench her spiritual thirst. He wanted so much healing for her. The woman said to him, Sir, you don't even have a bucket, and the well is so deep. I don't understand where I can get this living water. Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this well water will be thirsty again. It only lasts a little bit. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never really be thirsty again. I give you through this water eternal life. You will never feel isolated or lonely again with the life with me. The truth is for all of us that everybody gets thirsty, right? No matter whether you are a Jew or Samaritan, a Gentile, Greek, or an American, or a prostitute, or a priest, no matter whether you are a man or woman or anything in between, or something else entirely, everybody gets thirsty and longs for a closeness with God. Loving Jesus and knowing Jesus truly can quench our thirst, and Jesus wanted the lady at the well to know this. The woman said to him, I'm not sure how, but please give me this water so that I may not be thirsty. I do not like coming here in the hot day, in the hot sun. And honestly, Jesus, I need you. But she really didn't understand what Jesus had to offer. So Jesus changed the subject to make a point and said to her, go call your husband and come back. The woman answered, I don't have a husband. Jesus answered her so kindly, yes, I know. And I also know that you have had five husbands, and the person you are living with is not your husband. He didn't shame her or scold her. He just lovingly stated the truth without judgment. He didn't make her feel like she was one of them at all. The woman must have been so surprised that he knew her past, she was, and he was nice to her anyway. She now began to know that this Jesus was different. He said to him, Sir, I can see that you're a prophet. What you just said to me is true. How did you know that? She went on to say, probably trying to change the subject away from her. And sir, I know that the Messiah is coming someday and he will be called the Christ. When he comes, he will be a lot like you, except he will be able to tell us everything. Jesus said to her, don't you get it? I am that Christ. I am here speaking to you. 
About that time, the disciples returned. They were so surprised that he was talking to a woman, a Samaritan woman, no less, because she was one of them people, according to them. But about the same time, the woman suddenly began to understand that Jesus was the Messiah. She realized that he knew all about her, all about her past, and loved her anyway, that he truly was different. After that, she didn't stick around long. It seems like she was in such a hurry to go tell all the others in town about her conversation at the well with this man. And she knows now that he was the Christ. How excited she must have been. When she told people about meeting Christ, she said, Come and see, come and see this man who knew my past and loved me anyway. Come and see Jesus the Messiah. One of my favorite preachers and authors, Barbara Brown Taylor, says it this way. By Jesus telling the woman who she is, Jesus showed her who he was. By confirming her true identity, he revealed his identity. He is the one that loves her for who she is, not for what she has done or not done. He is a man who loves first. For me, this story is not about who this woman is or how she did or did not live, but about who Jesus is. How he accepted this woman for who she was, it teaches us that Jesus is the one that will cross all boundaries, break all rules, drop all disguises to speak to us like someone that you have known your whole life. There is no us and them in the heart of Jesus. In all the Gospels, Jesus never excludes anyone, nor belittles or demeans them. Yes, at times, I'm sure that Jesus was saddened by choices, but he does not condemn or exclude anyone from his concern or love. And that is such good news to all of us always. Now back to Tennessee at the farmer's market. I told the gentleman at the farmer's market, oh, I am not one of them. I saw the sad looks on the faces of my new friends. The instant embarrassment when I heard my own words changed me. Then fast forward now about six years. From that day at the farmer's market on, I knew it is why I left nursing to go to seminary, that God was preparing me to create a ministry in our area for women that were often put aside, cast away, shunned, or do not have any way to make a living or make a new life, a place for women that are truly thirsty. In 2016, with all of you at Douglas Avenue, we founded the ministry, Wouldn't It Be Lovely? The women learned to refurbish donated wooden furniture and so unique products as they work in a loving and caring environment with all volunteers and the community that love and supports them. Soon we will be providing housing to the most vulnerable and homeless women in the program. The women that work at Wouldn't It Be Lovely are truly thirsty for love and acceptance and a chance to make their lives better. The women we hire at Wouldn't It Be Lovely are often women that others will not or cannot hire. Women with criminal records, probation, parole, or women in drug recovery that can't seem to do life successfully without drugs. Women that many want to set aside or cast off. Women that many call them people. Our program is based on the principles that Jesus taught us at the Woman at the Well story. We try to follow Jesus' teaching and attempt to break down barriers and love all women without judgment. We use the gifts and love of the community, the congregation, people like you, people that love and know Jesus to make it all possible. We work alongside the women. They teach us and we teach them about love. There are so many women I could tell you about. Some women not much different than the women at the well and some not that much different than you and I. Women that are often misunderstood and judged. Women that need us to bring the love of Jesus into their lives through our actions and our words. Women that are truly thirsty for something to quench their thirst for a life without drugs and judgment and extreme poverty, a thirst for love. For example, this August, we had a celebration at Wouldn't It Be Lovely. We started a new GED program and three of the four women in the program completed their GED or their high school equivalent. One evening, I received a text message 
that said in bold, I passed, I passed. After many months of studying, this woman finally passed the last test and completed her GED. This is so special, not only because it opens up so many opportunities for a job and career planning, but it was extra special because I knew her past. I knew the trauma that she went through as a young child, how the people that were supposed to protect her did not. I knew that when kids her age were in high school, she dropped out to use drugs to numb the pain of her childhood. This woman has shown me more courage and strength as she moved forward to get sober and get educated. Now with her accomplishments, she is soon to start cosmetology school where she wants to help others feel pretty, feel pretty on the inside and the outside. She is not and never was one of them. She is a beloved child of God, like us. Another text message. A couple months ago, I got a message from another Wouldn't It Be Lovely gal. She was thanking me for the program and letting her be part of a taped fashion show that was a part of a fundraiser we recently had. And you will get to see a glimpse of that in a little bit later. All the women got to go to a boutique called Gypsy Soul to select an outfit to model. She said that she'd never been in a store like that. And to her surprise, all the people were so nice to her. She said, someone like me. This text meant a lot. You see, I knew her past. I knew that she spent 20 years on the streets of Springfield as a heroin addict, that she'd been in prison nine times. I also knew that she was molested as a child and dropped out of school in ninth grade because of the pain the world seemed too much. I knew that her mom was also a drug user and picked drugs over her. But she earned her very first paycheck at Wouldn't It Be Lovely, and she can't wait to save enough money to buy that dress she got to wear in the fashion show. She said it was the first time ever she'd worn a dress. She is not one of them. She is one of us, a beloved child of God. There is no them and us in the kingdom of God. We are all called to do our part, and us versus them mentality it will always create a polarizing effect. It will never bring people together, but only separate people more and more. At Wouldn't It Be Lovely, we base our program on the concept that love will draw people together. Love draws the women, the volunteers, the donors, and all of you church people together, all for the benefit of the women we serve, the women that often give more than they receive. We try to model a kind of love that gives us all eyes to see people as they really are, past the externals of addiction, criminal records, and poverty, to see the core of their humanity. Love becomes the catalyst that enables us not to ignore differences, but to see past them, to see the heart of the person. Today, our world is full of polarization, people that are in and people that are out. We often hear of them people, we draw lines that separate those anti-this people or those pro-that people, or those that live like this or live like that, or those from here and not there, or those people that look like this and not that. In the gospel of the, in the, gospel of the kingdom of God, us versus them is replaced with we. There is no us and them, but we together can change the world. In closing, we don't often get do-overs, we can't take words back once they are, they are said. But how I wish I could go back to Nashville at that farmer's market. I wish I had the chance to give that gentleman a different answer when he asked if I was one of them. I wish I would have said this. Sir, I'm not part of the Thistle Farms program, but I am a volunteer, a volunteer that's learning to love bigger and accept more because of the women that we see here. Then I would say, let me introduce you to my new friends, Jennifer and Penny. They help teach me that in God's world, there is no us and them, just we. And we are all beloved children of God that want to love and be loved. Amen. As we move into our time of prayer together, we get to share in a wonderful video presentation to help us see and celebrate and better understand the amazing associates of Wouldn't It Be Lovely and their journey to healing. 
This brief video is part documentary and part style show. Uh, it premiered at the 2021 annual Little Black Dress fundraising gala for Wouldn't It Be Lovely that was held in September. And this video was created and directed with love by Lydia Stumke. Let's enjoy it now. Addiction is just like empty and, and you're hopeless and you feel like you're destitute and you have no self-worth and no self-esteem and, and you used to not even want to wake up in the mornings unless it was for to get high and now I actually look forward to every day and I don't need to be on substance to do anything. Women in our community want to change their lives. They want to have um, more opportunities and they get stuck with so many barriers. When you're in recovery, often you also have um, legal challenges, you have problems with DCFS, which requires you to go to so many meetings and appointments, and that is so difficult to do that and also keep a job. You cannot go to fast food and say you need all these times off to do all of this. So we're able to provide the women with a lot of grace and support and work with their schedules so they can be employed um, and also um, maintain their recovery or their healing for whatever it is that brought them to our program. Wouldn't It Be Lovely started as a social enterprise, and our mission, of course, is women recovering from lives of addiction, um, abuse, and poverty. So we refurbish furniture and um, sew unique products to sell to the community. But more than that, what we do is we offer the women a circle of love and hope um, to help them in this period of their life where um, things have not gone well, and we give them the tools needed to move to another place. house. I was working fast food. Um, I was doing everything I had to do for DCFS to get my kids. So I was always running around and taking the bus everywhere. I'm going to counseling, dropping. It was really overwhelming. It's way hard without support and people to kind of guide you and like help you through. And I was able to get a job here, and it actually made it possible for me to work and do all, everything mandated for me to get my kids. My life before I found Wouldn't It Be Lovely was just probably empty and purposeless. I was struggling a lot with mental health, and that was kind of the journey into my addiction. I couldn't find myself. I couldn't have a. I didn't have a purpose. I felt like I couldn't find one. No, I just came here and they just supported me till I could find who I was, until I could get better, until I could make better choices and build a life for myself. And now I've built a life that I don't want to throw away. I've got a year and three months clean. I had a year May 29th. Um, I am actually about to have my GED. I have one test left. And after that, I'm gonna go to cosmetology school. And I would not have my GED or be able to get it right now if it wasn't for this place. We found in the last five years of doing this work that a lot of women um, have relapsed because they didn't have a secure and safe housing. Springfield has some wonderful programs for women with children, but if you don't have children or you don't have custody of your children due to your addiction, there were very few resources for housing. And so we lost a lot of women due to that insecurity. They go back to old patterns, to old people. So we recently purchased a home and we are getting it ready. We're doing a major fundraising campaign and we're getting it ready to house women next spring. We believe that that will make a huge difference in the recovery world for these women in the future. We've had so many women's lives saved here and moved on with real jobs now and with 10 years of addiction or more under their belt. It's proven that this program works and there are women that are successes and I would call myself a success story because I fully plan on graduating here and in January it'll be two years. I cannot tell you how supportive Springfield has been for our program. Our greatest need, I hate to sound um, obvious, but it is always funding. We're always needing finances to go to the next level. 
A lot of people have the misconception that our women's payroll is um, paid for by the sale, and certainly it does help, um, but it costs a lot more to run a nonprofit than I ever imagined. Yeah, this program, I'm just grateful for all the things it is because it is such a godsend for me and for all the women here. It's just changed my life for the better. Let's continue now in a spirit of prayer. And remember, if you have prayers that you would like to share, feel free to put those in the comments or use the contact form and the place that's there to share prayer requests. Let us pray. Loving, healing, and abundant God, we are so thankful to be joined together with you and with one another today. We are in awe of the way you connect us together. We are humbled that you choose to work in and through your people in ways small and large to be about your healing love and restorative justice in your world. Confident in your power and trusting in your healing, we lift to you the joys and concerns of our hearts. For all who are sick and suffering today, those in the hospital, and particularly family and friends struggling with new cancer diagnoses, that in the midst of their fear and not knowing about the future, they may feel your peace and healing deeply within and know that so many are holding them close. Lord, receive our prayer. For all who are grieving that you surround their heavy spirits with your love and comfort, Lord, receive our prayer. For all celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, Lord, receive our prayer. For all experiencing homelessness and those who care for them, Lord, receive our prayer. For your continued call to eradicate racism within ourselves and our political and social systems and to work for healing within our communities, nation and world, Lord, receive our prayer. For our world and all its peoples, particularly in Ethiopia, Afghanistan, along our southern borders, loving God, let your mercy be our watchword, your equity the judge of our relationships together, and make your ways be our ways. Lord, receive our prayer. For all the ways you call Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church to serve and show your love, including through Compass for Kids, the Micropantry, through Du Bois Elementary School, through the upcoming COVID-19 vaccination and health clinic, for the sewing circle creating clothes for children in need, for the generous hearts and financial giving in leadership and in teaching, and for generous hearts in prayer. Lord, receive our prayer. We give you thanks, creating God, for wouldn't it be lovely, and for all who have found life, healing, community, and purpose through its programs and relationships, from associates to volunteers to board members, and especially for Margaret Ann's visionary leadership. We thank you for the successful furniture showcase sale and for all of their gatherings, fundraisers, and sales during this past month and in the months to come. Please continue to bless, protect, and empower Wouldn't It Be Lovely with your spirit to reach even more women as they paint, sew, create, recover, fail, try again, build resiliency and skills, and as they heal, because love heals. Lord, receive our prayer. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who showed us how to pray with open, tender, and expectant hearts, Confident in you, as we now pray together the Lord's Prayer, please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Your generous giving, financially, with your time and talent, these make the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church possible. 
thank you so much for all of the ways that you give into our ministries. And I want to encourage you to continue in that generous giving. You can give financially by using our online giving portal. You can access that through our webpage, through the link that is in the comment section, through the QR code that's on the screen. Um, you can give with checks that you drop off or send to the church office. You can give automatically using your financial institution or ours. If you need help with that, just let us know in the church office. But thank you for all of the ways that you continue to give and particularly for those financial gifts. Um, we have so many wonderful opportunities to connect in service and ministry and growing in faith over these next weeks. And I just want to lift up a few of them for you. Our next COVID-19 vaccination clinic is coming up this next Saturday, October 23rd from 1 to 5 p.m. We are joining here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church with some wonderful community partners, including Wouldn't It Be Lovely, Alderwoman Erin Conley, and Fifth Street Renaissance. And we need everyone's help to make sure that this vaccination clinic is a success. First off, we need your help to recruit people to be vaccinated, uh, to share the flyer, talk with your family and friends and encourage them to come get vaccinated and help spread the word by joining in our neighborhood walks to share information and register people right here in our neighborhood. We need your financial donations to help underwrite the hospitality and incentives that we are offering. And we will need help the day of the clinic with hospitality and support. And we need you to pray for this effort and for the safety and health of our community in combating COVID-19. You can give to financially support the clinic through our online giving portal. Just choose vaccination clinic in the drop down menu and please let us know how you can help with this effort. You can use the link in the comment section or the one that's found in the e-newsletter to sign up or give us a call in the church office. Now, our annual trunk or treat celebration is set for Sunday, October 31st from 2 to 4 p.m. in the back parking lot of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. This is a safe and fun neighborhood celebration held outside, and there are lots of ways that you can uh, participate. You can bring your car, truck, van, motorcycle, whatever, decorate it and hand out candy. You can donate candy. You can help with hospitality setup and cleanup in so many other ways. Please see the e-newsletter for all of the information. Uh, check out the link there to sign up or give us a call again in the church office so that we can get you connected in ways to help. And then please note that our next meetup for Vital Conversations on Race is coming up on Monday, October 25th at 6.30 p.m. Listen to excerpts from Dr. Ibram X. Kendi's podcast, Be Anti-Racist, and then join in the prayer and conversation. All of the details for that are in the e-newsletter. You can contact the church office to connect. And again, please use that contact form today so that we can all get connected up together. And remember, there's a place there for you to put prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. Thank you. Please join us in singing, Bring Forth the Kingdom.
I want to thank you for joining us today for online worship. It is always a pleasure to be together online or in person. I do want to invite you, if possible, you can always join us for in-person worship at 815 and 1030. I also want to give you one more reminder to use the contact form um, that you can see on your online screen. Um, but mostly, I just want to ask you all to think about this week, the woman at the well, what she teaches us about loving others no matter what, to not judge and just to accept everybody as who they are and be Christ-like in any way we can. And as you leave this place, I do encourage you to love God more and serve your neighbor. Amen. Mm -hmm.